In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather today, remember last week we had the parable of the seed and the sower. Today, Jesus will continue teaching in parables using a similar image, but also the one of yeast and bread. As the Lord explains the parable today, he will tell us that the children of God are the yeast. It is our time to love the Lord. Make a difference. Pray that the Lord will work through this liturgy, plant the seed of not just his holy meat in the Eucharist in us, but his presence in us, that we may take Jesus to the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I am a great atheist. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. 
There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience, you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, who are kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgive. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. When everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in the field? Where have all the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. His slave said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into the barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seed seeds, Yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke yet another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, he who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. But then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. There have been many challenges through these many months. I figured out when we were the lockdown was that it wasn't going to be easy to, to get groceries or any of that stuff. And so um, I decided that I would revive my bread making skills. I had made bread many times before. The thing that was a little bit different this time was there was no yeast. No one had yeast and even when I pulled my strings with demons, they couldn't get it. <laughs> So I had to cultivate my own. It was my project for a couple weeks. I cultivated, I was able to get but I had seed in a truck from deer season. And I found out one of the easiest ways 
the yeast is rye flour. So I used my mortar and pestle and the little bit of rye I had and was able to and I started to collect the yeast that was available that was on the grains and in my kitchen and two weeks later I made my loaf of bread and have been making bread ever since. This morning I started making a loaf of bread and I had to turn it just before I came here. Because one of the things about this kind of yeast is it takes long. However, it's richer. The taste of the bread is wonderful. In the past few weeks, I've been honing those. It just came to me as um, I was preparing for this weekend. The rich part about this experience has been discovering that not just the instant yeasts and stuff that we have are there. Talked about what was available to them was more like what I was using. It takes time. And not only time, it happens almost silently when it does its thing, but powerfully. Some of the best breads I made were overnight breads where I put them in the refrigerator and they actually rose overnight in the refrigerator. It made me think about these parables this weekend when Jesus is talking about good seed and being sown in a field or, or yeast being the leaven for good bread. But he clearly in explaining this parable says that the children of heaven are the good seed or that yeast. You and I are that for that seed that he puts into the world. Not what Father Charlie said, what Jesus said today. I think sometimes I haven't always read that the same way. It really hit me that Jesus intends us to grow in our world among lots of different forces and maybe even along people who don't see the same as we do. And yet, through all of his teachings, he will teach about how, like in our first reading, we are to be kind and merciful. That we shine for the fruit that we bring to the world and God intends to give through us to the world. It strikes me that in this time when we've had to have varying degrees of how we've, we've celebrated the Eucharist and some today still will receive spiritually, how important it has been for us to, to hear Jesus promise that he remains in us. He remains in us. You and I are graced to be able to receive him again this evening. Another dose. A strengthening of the yeast he intends us to be. We are planted in a world to bear fruit. Maybe it happens through time. But you and I are meant to be there. I like the last part of Jesus' explanation. He said the wheat will shine like the sun. That's you and I. And maybe it's our time right now. This is an incredibly powerful time filled with crisis, but also a time when things can grow, where you and I can grow and develop. I hope it's given a true love for the Eucharist and a love for Jesus. I also hope that somehow our roots are growing deeper, even if it's in the dormant time when the seed is hidden in the ground or, or it's in a refrigerator in a cold time, but yet developing the richest of flavors. As I said, we are about to celebrate the feast of this bread from heaven. 
And Jesus will be planted deep in each one of us and remains with us. There's a whole spirituality there, isn't there? How we are with the Lord from our first communion on, onward. Now, some of that spirituality could also be we're with the Lord when we are not as kind as we can be or when we're sharp or when we let the world and its worldly things just choke off our charity. But that's not who we're meant to be. And it's not why Jesus gives us himself. But thank God for all of what he teaches. He forgives us. He prunes us. He nurtures us. And he has us bear fruit. Believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers before our Lord. For the church, that we may allow the good seed of the gospel to take root within us and bring forth a harvest of virtue, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of discernment, that we may defer judgment on those things that are unclear and await insight from God to make wise choices, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For educational leaders, that God will give them insight and courage as they work to plan for the coming school year so that students may learn and everyone stay safe and healthy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of humility, that we may recognize our strengths, abilities, and opportunities as gifts from God and be open to God's invitations to serve each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, that we may be a leaven of compassion and justice in our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper love of the Eucharist, of an appreciation how, of how God dwells with us through it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you sent your Son to be our Savior and to guide us to you. Through the gift of the Eucharist, Keep us close with him now and forever and ever. Amen.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become the bread of life. The healing of this water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself when he shared in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creatures, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive yes, we offer you in sacrifice, with humble and with contrite hearts. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who when the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion, very offerings of the law, accept and pray this sacrifice from faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. Comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and work of the Holy Spirit, things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body be given up in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice in giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For thy cross, resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Bl blessed Joseph, her spouse of the Holy Family, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and all our patron saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Walter Hurley, our apostolic administrator, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our brothers and sisters, we're pleasing to you at their passing your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord with you always and with your spirit. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to all who receive him.
still the case that people can come for their Sunday application any day of the week, so we never know how many people come, and it's just safe for us to attend. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. The body of Christ. <laughs> 